Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new 15-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display for 2013, now upgraded with Haswell Thunderbolt 2, as well as improved battery life thanks to those Haswell processors. We also get 802.11 AC Wi-Fi in here, but basically this is a spec upgrade of last year's model. They've also changed the pricing structure, and in order to do that, the base model no longer has a standard graphics processor, so no longer a standard GPU, so what I've done here is upgraded this. So although we have a cheaper price point, $19 versus $21.99, I've decided to go with the uh, $25.99 model, which has the dedicated GPU. So if you want a dedicated graphics processor in your 15-inch MacBook Pro, you actually have to spend more money this time. Now, the base configuration gets you started off with a quad-core i7 clocked at 2 gigahertz with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD, now using PCIe for faster data speeds. We get integrated graphics. This is the Iris Pro graphics built into the die of the CPU. Now, the next bump up is $600 dollars more. So at $25.99, which is the version I have here, you get a 2.3 gigahertz quad core i7. You get 16 gigs of RAM, which is double the RAM of the base model. And you get double the SSD space. So we get 512 gigs versus 256. We also get our dedicated GPU, which is an NVIDIA GeForce GT 750M with 2 gigs of GDDDR5 RAM. Now the upgraded model actually has two GPUs, both the integrated Iris Pro graphics built into the CPU as well as the dedicated GPU. So the Iris Pro graphics can be used on lower demanding tasks while the uh, higher end dedicated GPU comes in when it's needed. All right, so let's go ahead and crack into our MacBook Pro so we can take a look around. I'm just gonna cut the plastic. All right, I'm just gonna lift the lid and inside is our MacBook Pro with that little handy dandy tab to lift up. And there it is, you can see the front of our laptop, the back of the laptop with the hinge, and we'll take a close look at this once we get through the contents of the package here. So we have our power cable. You can see we have our little sleeve here with the adapter. So this is our extension cable, it plugs into the wall board. We also have our 85 watt power brick, which is a bit larger. This is the largest one you can buy on the Mac laptop. They come in 45 watt and I believe 60 watts for the 13 inch as well. So you can see we have our MagSafe 2 connector here, which is protected by this little plastic sleeve. There you go, it's a nice thin connector. And uh, we have our brick here covered in plastics. So let's go ahead and free that. So there you go, it's a pretty heavy brick here. You can see this pops off, folds for transport. You can also add your extension cable, like so. You can also use wall adapters if you're traveling to other regions. We also have our cable management here for traveling, so you can neatly tie up your cable for your briefcase. We also have our literature packet designed by Apple in California. And inside we'll find a quick instruction guide. This is, of course, using Maverick. So this has Mavericks pre-installed. Gives you an instruction booklet on the accessories, the ports, and some of the features of Mavericks, as well as some of the included software. Interesting thing here is that you can see some of the older iLife apps in this literature, uh, which have been recently updated. We also have all of our regulatory information, as well as our Apple stickers. We also have our microfiber cleaning cloth, which is branded with the Apple logo. Of course, this is useful for cleaning that glossy Retina display. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the 15-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. We're going to break this plastic seal. Slide it out. And there we go. Now, unlike the 13-inch model, this has not been redesigned in any way. It's the same externally, same dimensions externally. It's actually just as thin as the 13-inch now, which was slimmed down. This is 0.71 inches thin, just like the 13-inch. So along the right side, we'll find our SD card slot, a HDMI output, as well as a USB 3.0 port. Uh, along the front, we'll find our thumbnail port for lifting up the lid. Along the left side, we'll find our MagSafe 2 connector for connecting our power source. So here I have a MagSafe 2 connector. You can go ahead and connect it. And you can see we have a little light indicating charge data. So green for fully charged and amber for charging. And you can see it's magnetic, so pretty much will pull itself into that port and it's easy to pull out without yanking your computer off the table. Now we also have our upgraded Thunderbolt 2 ports, which double the transfer speeds of last year's Thunderbolt ports. So this is now 20 gigs versus 10. Again, another USB 3.0 port, so two in total. We also have our headphone jack, which doubles as our microphone input. Now along the back, you'll see our classic full width hinge, like all MacBooks. If you look along the bottom, you'll see the ventilation. 
built into the chassis. It's milled into this aluminum. Now, along the left hand and right hand side, you'll find your ventilation ports, which also act as structural integrity members. You can see that on the left hand and right hand side, and that stiffens the chassis. Now, unlike the 13 inch models, these do not act as the speaker grills because this actually has dedicated speakers. Now, along the back, we'll find our MacBook Pro branding, which is no longer around the bezel of the display like it was with the non retina MacBook Pro, which incidentally has been discontinued. So the 15 inch model is now gone, while the 13 inch model is still here at $1199. So the 15 inch non-retina MacBook Pro, the one you could upgrade easily, is gone completely. Now speaking of upgrading, there is a removable back panel here with pentalobular screws, but the RAM is soldered to the motherboard, the battery is glued to the chassis, and basically if you want to upgrade your RAM, you can't do it yourself. You're going to have to do it through Apple. You're going to have to order it through Apple when you order your MacBook. So get the RAM you want when you first buy your computer. Now taking a look at our keyboard, you can see we have these speakers flanking either side of it, and you can see they're micro drilled holes are really small uh, almost looks like they're not even there they're pretty flush we also have our full-size glass trackpad with multi-touch we have our full-size backlit keyboard with our standard controls for media power keyboard brightness screen brightness we have our launcher as well as mission control now the display is edge-to-edge -edge glass you can see it has pretty decent anti-reflective capabilities for a uh, glass display a glossy display uh, it's 70 percent better than the now discontinued 15 inch macbook pro now up top you'll find your integrated 720p hd camera along with an ambient light sensor and an led indicator that tells you when the camera is active all right so let's go ahead and boot this up for the first time just going to tap the power button in the upper right corner of course, this is running Mavericks, so we have a few features here which are new with Mavericks. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up for the first time. I'm just going to use English as my main language, United States as my location. I'm going to brighten the screen here a little bit. Go to continue, select my wireless network. All right, so I have the option to transfer information from another Mac or a Time Machine backup or another startup disk. I can also transfer from a PC or I can do that later. So I'm going to do that later. And I can sign in with my Apple ID. All right, so I'm just going to agree to the terms and conditions. Click Agree. All right, next step is to create my computer account, so I'll be able to name it and give it a password. Now, this is a new feature with Mavericks iCloud Keychain, which saves your passwords and that sort of thing to your iCloud account. You can set that up later or set it up now. I'm going to go ahead and set that up later. I'm going to go ahead and register my Mac with Apple, and that should be it. All right, so there is Mavericks. We have Mission Control, we have our launcher, and we can use our trackpad to swipe from the right to get to our notification panel. Now, of course, the big news here is that Retina display. So, of course, it's in its name, so it's the highlighted feature here. So, we have a screen resolution of 2080 by 1800. So, there's a lot of eights in that. So, that gives us a pixel density of 220. It's not quite as dense as something like the 13-inch MacBook Pro, which has a 227 PPI. Uh, so, a beautiful display, and it looks great off-axis with excellent color reproduction. And you can see it's also pretty bright, so we can really bring it up here. A really nice display and definitely one of my favorite features about it. The other great thing here is that it's pretty much edge to edge. So there's a very small bezel here which allows it to shrink down its overall profile. So even though we have a very large display on a fairly large laptop, it's got relatively small dimensions, especially compared to the outgoing 15 inch model. Now, if we look really closely at the display, it gives you an idea of the pixel density on this display. So this is far closer than you would normally look at the display. So of course, you're going to see some pixels, but from a normal working distance, Distance, uh, you cannot discern pixels. So if you're standing maybe uh, two, three feet away from the computer, you won't be able to pick out pixels. This is certainly much better than something like the MacBook Air, which has obviously much lower resolution. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our Cinebench scores comparing last year's MacBook Pro with Retina Display to this year's. So the last year's also had a uh, dedicated GPU, which was standard. It was a 650M uh, NVIDIA processor. Now we're on 750M. Uh, the OpenGL score on the new one was 53.4 frames per second versus 46.54. So there is quite a substantial gain there. It's not overwhelming, but it is an improvement. In terms of our CPU performance, there's an even bigger gain there. So the CPU scored about 620 on the uh, new model versus 555 on the old model. Now, in terms of our Geekbench scores, we see bigger gains on our single core score. So 3507 versus 3136. Uh, multi core score, we have 13625 versus 12050. So I think that's a pretty significant gain here, although it's not overwhelming. Now, the real performance gains can be seen in terms of the SSD speed. So you can see that the new MacBook Pro almost doubles the performance of last year's MacBook Pro in terms of read and write speed. And that's thanks to PCIe now built into the latest Macs. 
Now, in terms of battery performance, this gets you about eight hours, so that is an hour increase from last year. It's not quite as good as something like the 13-inch model, which gets you nine hours, or the 13-inch MacBook Air, which gets you 13 hours now. So that's actually pretty impressive for a high-resolution display with dedicated graphics and a uh, quad-core CPU. So in conclusion, if you want a large screen MacBook, you no longer have to be a pro to justify the investment in the hardware. It's now at a more accessible price point and you get really capable performance uh, that uh, maybe a pro wouldn't be interested in, but of course a pro can upgrade to something like this. So that's gonna do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.